Good evening and welcome to the Vigilante Dialogues. I'm your host, Shana Smith, welcoming you to the National Boardroom. Tonight, we continue our conversation about good governance. This will be part three and hopefully the wrap up. I have with me again my colleagues, Mr. Elton Cowan and Mr. Claude O'Klein. Welcome. Welcome, please. Thanks right, for having us. Thank you. Yes, pleased to be here. All Good right, time. so this is such an extensive topic. Obviously, now we're here for part three because of that. Yes. So we're looking forward to continuing the dialogue around what good governance is because I think it's a very important topic that persons should understand, have a, a basic understanding that when they do hear the word being used in speeches and what's not, that they understand, you know, good governance. There's no good governance without accountability, without transparency, without following the rule of law, without it being responsive. It should be equitable and inclusive effective and efficient, as well as participatory. So if somebody uses the word as a good governance and transparency, it's like you can't have good governance without transparency. transparency. <laughs> so again, they understand these are the things that, this is how you would judge it, as far as, you know, do we have good governance? And if not, what are the elements of it that are missing? So I think we, we covered all that ground in the yeah. last two shows. So we had started at the end of the last show talking about um, like going sector by sector. So what we want to do tonight is we're going to talk about, you know, the different areas in our society and analyzing, you know, what where what where we see our strengths and where we see needs to be improved. And of course, we you know that's a long list because <laughs> yes. you know you, our society is very multifaceted. So we're going to start at the top and we're going to work our way down and see where we land. Sure. Right. Okay. okay. So economy, that's one of the things that we hear a lot about um, of late. Um, one of the things for me that I think is very key in terms of what we do in our, or um, I would say in our planning for a country, is in looking at the economic empowerment of our people. Yeah. Because if we have a, a one billion dollar economy, meaning that we're moving a billion dollars in money every year yeah. within the country, in and out, you know, who who is benefiting from that? Who who is you know managing that? We know the government has a budget of 300 million in revenue. So that means there's 600 million dollars out there. You know, and the question again goes, who's owning the businesses or who's controlling the different industries in our economy and how that affects us? What are your thoughts on that, LT? My thoughts on that is I think more can be done to empower locals mm -hmm. to take a part of our industries. There are new industries coming up. Let's take, for example, one in particular that's a peeve of mine the alternative energy industry is going to be coming. It's much like when the computer age came, mm -hmm. did we take part in it and be the computer engineers. When technology moved to the next level, the digital age, did we take part in that? Now we have fuel for which the two giants we are no owners of, whether it's a Trinidad company or the one from Barbados Sol. Mm -hmm. Now we have this new technology coming in to play, you hear about it all the time, going green. Mm -hmm. And just this week, I think it was France said that they are going to be banning gas-powered cars by 2040. Oh. So yes, where, are we now, where are we now in preparation for that? How many of our young people are being trained or being told or taught to go away and you know, study green technology? Mm -hmm. They come back with a business degree, they come back with a degree in mechanics or you know, something to that extent or even law for which most of us are going and come back to. But then it's an industry that, we, again, we miss. Mm -hmm. I think now the education needs to be in the school, whether it's by trade shows, whether it's by career courses about green technology. Mm -hmm. And in the scholarship that they bought each year, I know during the Virginia's party, it was 60 scholarships per year. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that continued in the same number on the National Democratic Party. But I assume it's still 60. Okay. How many of these 60 scholarships annually are going toward four or five persons within the green technology. Mm -hmm. Recycling is a big issue. Mm -hmm. The incinerator was in there last week. It's piled high. Mm -hmm. Now, everything breaks down. Whether it's your car or your TV or your phone, yeah. everything breaks at some point. So I'm not going to knock it for breaking, but why did it break? When you ask the engineers down there, the guys who work down there, when glass melts, when it cools, it gets back to glass. Mm -hmm. And if that sits on the machinery, yeah, then you gotta be, they got to be there chiseling this thing off yeah. to get it going again. This is a call now for three color yeah, um, recycling bins. Re recycling bins. One mm -hmm. for plastic, one for bottling, and one for whatever the waste is. Mm -hmm. Me and you at our age might not catch on next month. But five years from now, when that sixth grader or, or fifth grader gets to high school, that generation has got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I, me and Claude, you're still young. Me and Claude, <laughs> <laughs> me and Claude might be more on a more senior level. So you ain't put, you ain't gonna separate. <laughs> Huh? That's what you're saying. You're going to separate. We will. But we gonna, I'm saying we're going to take it a little, a little harder. So if you start training from the... The younger generation. You know, from the... Uh, what do you call it? The, the preschool. Preschool the level. School That's what I want to say. From the preschool level. Yeah. By the time you get to class five, they'll be saying, Mommy, no, that ain't the one for that. Mm -hmm. Because we might forget which color for which. Mm -hmm. But they'll be the one to tell us, No, the, the, the plastic got in the blue one. Yeah. And so forth and on. Okay. But the education needs to start now. No. It comes... If you're talking about economy and being sustainable mm -hmm. in the future, when people and that's say a possible business opportunity there for many yeah. locals, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, of course, we need to create a market. Yeah, how do we get it out and who takes well, it? Well, that's also part the of the of business. Doing it? The business Is government research? going to subsidize yeah. 50 percent of it going so it could be a cost mm -hmm. savings and we could make some money? Whoever you, is doing it, you know, the all idea, these things have to come in. The idea okay. that I had because I was watching um, a show on um, PBS the other day and they were actually interviewing the USVIA waste management people. So I was like, well, how come we never sat down and had that conversation with them? Because in both scenarios, you would have a volume issue because they're saying, you know, we can't generate enough. But if you combine the two USVIs, I'm pretty sure we'd be able to fill up a badge or container or two and be able to send them off to a recycling center someplace and it'd be beneficial for both. But we're just throwing the idea out there. You know, yeah. with, with, with our little 30 plus, yeah. we are moving garbage. Trust yeah. me, if you look at the amount of um, cases of water bottles being sold out of the supermarket, you know we have a problem down at Paco Pond. Exactly. Yeah. So, for, first of all, and, and in addition to what uh, uh, Thief said, mm -hmm. you know, we want to uh, continue to applaud you for the work, the meaningful work that you're doing and, and joining us in the conversation that needs to be had and conversations that needs to be had Thank territorially. You. So you, you need to be applauded for your steadfastness and, uh, and, and, <laughs> and, and doing that. No, it's, it's very important because we, we are at that, we are at that stage, mm -hmm. that fork in the road, so yes. to speak. Um, and in addition to what, you know, what has been shared, you know, the, we, we have two pillars. It is still uh, the tourism product mm -hmm. and financial services. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember the exact name of the bill. It was introduced and there was only one reading and then it was knocked down. But it was the notion of the value added services around the financial service industry mm -hmm. where they were going to differentiate between the small businesses and having a, a construct, an mm -hmm. IT construct mm -hmm. where where small businesses, there was a cap, I think, $5 million and below, you can register at a much lower rate, mm -hmm. become a sophisticated company, become an incorporated entity. Yes. yes. And, um, and they envisage that, that millions of entities, at least hundreds of thousands, mm -hmm. uh, reasonably, as is the case with the financial industry and the trust companies, who register IBC companies here. Mm -hmm. and, and they envisage that you would have that kind of volume uh, that would feed into this IT entity. Mm -hmm. And strangely enough, uh, it, it received one reading in the house and then it was not done. And I'm not sure if, if there was political pressure from okay. elsewhere, mm -hmm. but that is a, a, a major component, I think, that can, that can and will work. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in terms of what is existing and adding to a pillar mm -hmm. in terms of value added services and not just depending on the current mm -hmm. construct yeah. which continues mm -hmm. to be under attack. So I think that is one area that needs to be resurrected. I think I'm going to do some more research and, and, and get the accurate name of that bill. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go behind the scenes and find out why what is it that it, it only received one reading because <laughs> yeah. what I suspect is always the case when you see things that it happens in the political apparatus is pressure came from somewhere mm -hmm. who didn't like the idea of something being taken away from them. Yeah. But I think it was important, one, because it helps to spur uh, Beaver Islanders, Virgin Islanders, who right now is Claude Skelton Klein doing business as. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, uh, you, you are open to all kind of liability because anything happens with that venture, yeah. you become personal responsible because you don't have the sophisticated corporate yeah. structure right, that legal because structure. you don't have the capacity financially to, uh, as an exactly. upstart to afford mm -hmm. what the same thing that a trust company is doing. So you imagine your small business company in your, in your jurisdiction where you're trying to get 
your people to own piece of the pie mm -hmm. as that's one of the major institutions of your pillars and you don't provide the level the of access. ease yeah. and access mm -hmm. that is user friendly yeah. so that needs to be uh to be de de delineated and go that. back to let me add to that you and, and I'll, I'll let him jump in but i want to come back then to the tourism component for sure let me add to that when i came home from college back in 96 97 in 98, I incorporated what was then becoming the Virgin Islands standpoint. I did it. I went up, I get the documents, I read it, I did it. By the time I went to reincorporate another company, which was called Print Right at the time, I had to go and get a lawyer had to, get to do for me what I can do with, a, with the degrees that I have. So I have to pay someone who just came out of high school and got a secretary's job at one of these companies. Mm -hmm. And that frustrated me. Because then what you were doing when you're talking about developing small business, you're putting additional cost on me. Mm -hmm. I'm presently going to incorporate a company. I had to go to another company. He told me 950. Yeah. Wow. And that's his local rate. And that's a local rate. And, yeah. and, you should, local and, rate. and, and the local person, the upstart, should not have the same level of requirement mm -hmm. that a multinational company has. That's you, true. You, and you I cannot, think so. you know, and don't talk to me about globalization and, and, and playing level field. You oh. cannot have a level playing field when you have that kind when, when you are dealing with our jurisdiction yeah. exactly and because yeah. you disenfranchise mm -hmm. your own people at the end of the day and they end up owning less and less until they own nothing it of the goes pie down to the marine industry. that feeds the country yeah which dovetails in so from the financial service product and the value added things that needs to go around okay that. in terms of diversifying because it, it, there's so much we were hearing them talk about the different products, just like with tourism, that yeah. they can diversify the industry, but we're not seeing that push. You're not seeing the push. Mm -hmm. and, and even when governments, including this one and, and the ones before, then they form these, they may not even call them think tanks, but they form a group who was supposed to come up with the best ideas, the innovative ideas. Mm -hmm. But then once you discover, those persons sit, invest their time and efforts at the table sometime on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. And then they put forward mm -hmm. a programmatic agenda mm -hmm. to the government and then it stalls right there. Yeah. So the very thing that you have engaged them to do with their particular skill set, then because it doesn't fit whatever at the time, mm -hmm. yes. you, you discard it. And so, so we, we have to own part of uh, the industry that feeds The second piece is the tourism. Mm -hmm. The tourism product, you know, that, that thing that cannot be outsourced, that, that, is, that is contained within our jurisdiction, given who we are, given where we're located, et cetera, et cetera. We have to create, again, a greater ease for our people to do business in that industry. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the marine component that currently is not owned by us, mm -hmm. how do we redeem some of that has to be a question on the table. How do we get our local people to add the user tourist friendly items to wrap around the kind of hospitality services that when one comes to jurisdiction as to what happens to them while they're here, they what, what's their mm -hmm. playground and who is it that provides that service, who provides that product becomes, has to be a focus of any government mm -hmm. in ensuring that their people mm -hmm. owns a great deal of the pie because Shana is not good enough to claim the highest GDP and to talk about a billion dollars that comes through and to have some beautiful, colorful, flowing <clears throat> charts and to pop up on the screen when that's not the telltale of how you're doing. Mm -hmm. How are your people doing? Your exactly. domestic agenda. Are yeah. they progressing yes. in tandem mm -hmm. yeah. with all of these yes. figures you're throwing out or are they being diverted somewhere else? Exactly. So, so I think that th there needs to be a concerted visionary effort that targets the financial services and the tourism product and see what are the services that needs to be wrapped around those, yeah. provide the ease of doing business in the jurisdiction and target your people first. They, have, they should have first right of refusal mm -hmm. of being engaged and or expanding their existing businesses in those areas. And I'll add one more. Mm -hmm. Agri you see, without economic activity in your jurisdiction, you, you, you are lost. There needs to be economic yeah. activity. Agriculture feeds the world. Mm 
Mm -hmm. There has to be a re-education of how we view agriculture. You see, when you talk to persons about agriculture now, they, they envision that you somewhere talking about a whole peak and you put in things in the ground. Yeah. And, we, and that is not, that is yeah. not true. Mm -hmm. Technology has every, advanced there too. Exactly. Everything that we eat every day mm -hmm. is, in, is box, can, bottled, imported from, from somewhere. somewhere. All of the markets and the makeshift markets and the real markets from our regional neighbors and brothers and sisters that mm -hmm. we stop by every day, purchase from, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's an agrarian construct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have expended in previous administrations, God knows how many millions of dollars. Uh, we still have these white elephants sitting around. Mm -hmm. We are not serious about food security. And, and no matter what we say on podiums, if you really want to know what a government or any organization's real interests, interests are, Look at what is appropriated in their budget for it. Yes. If it ain't in the budget, budget it ain't yeah. gonna it ain't a priority. Happen. Yeah. And so, exactly. so I think the whole agricultural uh, 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 department or agricultural uh, constructs needs to be visited. Mm -hmm. We need to be concerned about food security, and we need to ensure that it is our people that is leading in, in that charge. area. Yeah. Even if you have to import a certain kind of expertise or skill that goes around any of those services, yeah. it's by policy and by law, it needs, you need to ensure that your people are a vested partner substantially mm -hmm. in what takes place. Yeah. Not, 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 uh, what do you call that thing, um, fronting for nobody. Yeah, yeah. Not, yeah it, that's it, not the it's, economic it's, empowerment. It's time out about. for that kind of foolishness, yeah. Yeah. and it needs to be mandated in law. Mm -hmm. If you want to do business in our jurisdiction, here's the requirement. Yeah. No exceptions. Mm -hmm. Simple. And, Simple. And go from there. Back to but tourism. Before, no, we, we got a long list, but we're going to take a break. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> we're going to take a quick break, get a commercial break in, and then we'll be right back. Okay. Welcome back to the Vigilante Dialogue. I'm your host, Shayna Smith. And with me, we're continuing our conversation around good governance. We're doing a sector by sector analysis. So we just touched on economy. So we know two important things I think I got out of that was we need to look about economic empowerment for locals because we are way past the 60s where you know we were we had to attract foreign investment in to kind of jump start the economy mm -hmm. and that's where we started off with finance not financial services tourism, tourism. Mm -hmm. and then you know the next evolution came in the 80s 90s with financial services yes. so that's where we, we the, I would say that's like when it really had a divergence in terms of having two solid pillars but like you're talking about now with agriculture, somebody mentioned to me even fishing the other day. Absolutely. Our industries yeah, that absolutely. we need to start to invest, our government needs to start to invest and give persons the, the resources that they need to get there yes. and go from there. Connected to the economy or in terms of economic development, you can never leave the social part behind. So let's talk about education, immigration, and labor. Because hmm. all three of them, I think, are connected in there. Because, again, we're talking about economic empowerment. We need to make sure that we are not just producing diplomas in our high school and degrees at the college, but that there is, they are meeting the skill sets that are needed in the industries. And, you know, so are we doing that well enough or where, where we need to make some improvements? Immigration, I will need to open you all to your thoughts out there, and labor. For me, the big issue there, we're looking at high youth unemployment. Um, I don't think we know our real unemployment rate because our survey has never been truly done. If you ever see any reports, there's always a star next to it. So it's actually an estimated figure. So, and it's always stuck at 3% for years now. <laughs> so, you know, and as I always say, running a country without statistics is like driving a car without your dashboard working. You don't know where nothing is, whether you're driving at 10 miles per hour, 100. Or your tank is empty. No gas, or you have <laughs> a tank. You know, we, we really have to do something about our statistical system yes, and, and have meaningful information out there for everybody. Yes, we you do. Know? So, um, let's go. Immigration, labor, and... Education. Education. Pick one. <laughs> we pick all three of them. Education, I think we need to go back and restructure. We had a whole curriculum review going on mm -hmm. two years ago or three years ago. When um, Brian Penn, just before Brian Penn went to the college, mm -hmm. it was ended and had turned in. And it started from the um, preschool, preschool straight up. through to high school. Mm -hmm. But still, even in that, when I looked at it, because I got copies of it, because I had to print some of it, 
I realized that still we are not training our students to be entrepreneurs. Mm. We are training them to be employees. And as Claude said earlier about these industries and us and we taking a part of it, mm -hmm. I have a solution in my mind that I think would work. I said it several times before in circles, never on national television. Mm -hmm. I would say it now if I'm allowed to. Oh sure. All right. I think we need. I think we said it before. We need to get an intervention program from in the early stage in the primary school. Mm -hmm. When students leave from primary school with a grade three certificate for passing English as a study and math, and that's to go into the high school system, and automatically from time they get in there, that's eight subjects in a bag full of books. Mm -hmm. They struggle to pass three subjects. How in the world are they going to pass eight easily? That child becomes frustrated because one, they want to please their teacher, they want to please their parents. When they can't do either of the two, they start to please friends. So they become the nuisance in the class or the big joker. Mm -hmm. And everybody, like, you see my friend, because now that's his fame. Yeah. But really, academically, he's failing because the system is set stacked against mm -hmm. someone who just passed three subjects, barely. Mm -hmm. So now if you get an intervention program where we talk about the junior high or the middle school, whatever you want to call it, yeah. these students now have a chance to now step up and you catch them at their weak point where they are still young. Not when they're in 11 11 and, and, and 12 grade. And 12th grade. Mm -hmm. That's too late to catch them because now they have they already adopted some kind of culture or rudeness, whatever you want to call it, because we had to call them rudeness and say they're the relics. Yeah. When in fact they're not really want to be the relics if you catch them from early. When they leave middle school going into high school, now high school should start at 9th grade and not 8th at this point. Mm -hmm. So you got 6, 7 and 8. When they get into 9th grade, they should, we should sit with parents, advisors and parents and students discussing a career path based on what we have put in place mm -hmm. in the economy. So then tourism. that means to what you're talking about in terms of the curriculum review would be looking at the programs now that we actually have. Because remember now, you know, when you get to third form, which is 10th grade now, mm -hmm. then they ask you, you know, do you want to study the sciences, exactly. the arts, accounts? Um, I'm saying do it at nine. Woodwork, electronics. Exactly. I'm saying do it at nine. Uh -huh. This way now you have nine, 10, 11, 12. That's four. So the high school. A bachelor's degree is four years. Mm -hmm. So by the time you do plumbing in ninth grade and you get to your final exam in plumbing mm -hmm. should be a test in practical. Can I plumb and, you know, can I read a blueprint mm -hmm. on how to plumb a four-story house for Claude of an, you know, so, That will tell whether a child passed that class, yes or no. Or no. So when he so or she graduates, uh -huh. now they can be employed or they can go on, study some more, or they can start their own, even at the age of 18. So wouldn't that be better suited to in the technical high school that we've heard some talk about, which is what um, the Virgin Islands um, technical school. Well, we have a technical school now, mm -hmm. but I'm talking about it shouldn't have been even. Yeah. It could have been done within the high school because we we'll never technical school in our day. We had metal work, woodwork, mechanic, and some other thing else, electronics uh -huh. in high school. Yeah. They were all under the high school system. We weren't yeah, separated. Yeah, but they, the, the problem I had with that system mm -hmm. is that we were telling them, because they took level 40 or 41, that their diploma was a lesser value that's from me exactly. who graduated with a science class. And that's the issue I have with it, how it's currently set up. But it was so for me for us, for with us. Yeah, because it, if you go in 1-7, mm -hmm. you were considered a dunce. I'm in one one and one two, so I'm considered an genius. Yeah, and expectancy theory <laughs> is what hurt a lot of us. Yeah, it did. Because you are expected to do good, so automatically mm -hmm. energies are put towards you doing good. You are expected to fail, so less yeah, energy is that, put towards that system you needs to, failing. Needs to change. So, so I'll jump in here, let's hear. Well, your well I, I think coupled, coupled with what 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 is being said on the matter of education, I am still absolutely convinced. First, let me let, let us applaud the teachers and students who do as well as they do for teaching and learning under our current system. <laughs> that is true. And so uh, they, they need to be applauded mm -hmm. that, that, that our students do as well as they do. Mm -hmm. Because the critique that I've always had is that we do not provide them the necessary resources, both in terms of facility and material for them to do an even greater job mm -hmm. if they had the tools that they really needed. Mm -hmm. I mean, our children will excel beyond measure. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we applaud them for what is being done and that they do as well as they do. And there has been some improvements under this government and this particular minister. Mm -hmm. we, we've seen some efforts in the, in the right direction. Yeah. But I am still convinced that we have not leveraged persons 
and bring their skill set and their wealth and their relationships to bear in helping us to construct both the physical structures mm -hmm. for primary, middle, and high school mm -hmm. that is needed, that is conducive, that is 21st century, uh, and, and is conducive for teaching and learning. I still believe that that needs to be done, that conversation needs to be had. Yeah. They need to be put up as a part over it and helping to raise the funds to do it. Mm -hmm. Because you, I, I just read in a, in a note the other day, that we borrowed nine million dollars for education. Yeah, we're just gonna prove. We, we 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 cannot keep. We can't borrow our way out of debt as a principle. Mm -hmm. Now that's the first thing. That's the first that's thing. Mm -hmm. you, you can't borrow your way out of a hole. You you, you owe and nine million dollars. Okay, but at the end of the day, it's still not sufficient for what we need mm -hmm. done. But the question is, how do we know what we need done? Because we don't have a plan. Well, <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah, and that's, that's something to put to the minister, where, to this government. Where, where, what where are we it? going to use? Because it's actually, let me, let me update you, it's actually $12 million. $4 million is supposed to come from local funding to go along with this nine. But exactly what this is going so towards. I, million. Yeah. yeah. So for exactly what is it supposed to be going towards, whether it's the primary schools, the preschools, I mean the high school. Has it been defined? We don't know. Yeah, but, but, but you see, and, 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 to, and to what you're saying, here's, here's my point, because if it's 12 million, if it's 13 million, mm -hmm. my point is, coupled with economic activity, getting a, a situation where your students and your teachers have what they need, becoming trained for jobs that we don't even have names for yet. Mm -hmm. you, you, you follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It is not sufficient even if we had $20 million if we're borrowing it. Yeah. Now, I'm glad that we have something that we can move the ball down the field, but there, I think there's a bigger picture and a greater vision to be cast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have trust companies here who move trillion of dollars to your jurisdiction. You have not asked them for ten dollars a pop on on every account and it, whatever it is. There, there needs to be a construct mm -hmm. where there is a re, a constant inflow of money Monies. that is not borrowed, yeah. where people and companies are benefiting from being in this jurisdiction to resource education. Yeah. There is not one single person that you will come on television that will stand in front of a camera or go on the news, any news media that will be against that. Yeah. We as a government and we as a people have to put a demand on our government to put a demand mm -hmm. on the structures and the system. That we do have. That we do have. Yeah. That will resource. You know, no, no, no minister and no because one, no government. Because education is something that's like every year Every day, how, how, how are your every month, how are your companies going to resource? It's yeah. in our, it's in your vested interest. interest yeah. There needs to be a percent or a dollar figure. I'm sure I, it's not indigenous to me. I am sure somebody or bodies have come up with this. Yeah, idea I've heard before. it before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it needs to be instituted in law. Yeah. It needs to become more than just a policy. Mm -hmm. It needs to be cast as a vision where you bring those same business owners, those same business persons around the table and put a demand on them. You do it and you come back and you tell us how you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. All we know is we want it done and we want it done by the end of the year. I, yeah. I agree. You see, and, and short of that, Mm -hmm. you're not uh, you're not going to ever have what you need for education look at the so-called first world country look at what the girl divorced there the young like shouldn't say girl that's that song is disparaging look at what the woman that trump has just appointed there with the and how she did the, the charter school dick mm -hmm. devos the same people who used to own peter island mm -hmm. his wife mm -hmm. that's who's over education right now okay so even first what you call first world countries mm -hmm. always have a challenge with education. Yeah. So we are no different. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying we have a unique situation here. Yeah. Insofar as what we house, mm -hmm. who we have, and it needs to be leveraged. So that's that's I want to keep I'm gonna keep on pressing that yeah, on the matter of education. Point. Yeah, and I like on the matter like of point. labor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I if I was in charge, I would put an immediate freeze on any new work permits. 
Mm -hmm. And I want a full assessment of the 10,000 we issued last year. I want to know who these people are. I want to know where they are. And I'm going to give whomever the department is. I want you six months to get a report, a comprehensive report on my desk, so I can go back to the people and say, the good people of Virginia, here's what I've discovered. Here's where we are. And therefore, mm -hmm. here's what I believe we need to do. Okay. That labor department needs to be tied more directly with immigration and with the police in terms of technology. Yes. We have to know who comes into our country. We do. And is it the best person for, for that? You can't have any and everybody yeah. coming into your Free country. Uh, uh, not, not for where we are and not, not for this small footprint. Mm -hmm. so, so I would put a freeze, I would get a complete assessment, and I would come back to the people and say, here's what we believe is the cure for what needs to happen. We're going to put everybody in alert. Mm -hmm. Coupled with the immigration, we need to have a properly resourced surveillance department. Mm -hmm. You know, in immigration. In immigration, mm -hmm. where you uh, listen, you you have you seen the height and 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 crime and and this is not to blame whoever comes. It's, it is to say, if you don't manage your growth, mm -hmm. the very thing you desire will turns out to be your detriment. Yeah. Yes, that's true. And so those just just as as I sit and think through it, those are just some of the things I would throw out yeah. mm -hmm. in terms of what needs to happen in those areas. We need to make sure that our people are employed. Yeah. You can't be graduating two hundred something students every year from high school out of college. They all don't go off for for further uh, matriculation. Mm -hmm. what, what, what are we going to do with them? But Where are they? But Who are that, they? Are they working? Exactly. Yeah. Even and on, on a sustained job where they can live, not yeah. just where you pay them four dollars an hour and then say they have a job. Yeah, mm -hmm. that that can't that can't be the answer. Yeah, no. not not if you're serious yeah. about your people, not if you love your people. And, and that's one of the things mm -hmm. where um, not to cut you off, but in terms of uh, a career resource center, mm -hmm. we need we need one of those in the high schools mm -hmm. because it's something where again, you know, in college you were able to go to the career resource center that's and there was abundance of information. Um, some of it was specifically for the market that we were in because I, I went to school in Orlando. Mm. And because then they would have job listings, you know, employers would, would come list the different types of jobs and you would know what's available. And you're able to now match your degrees even better. Yeah. And again, it's something where we have to start to mold the minds of our children. Because if they don't know, mm -hmm. they're not going to jump up and say, well, you know what, I need to become an electrical engineer because technology is the way of the future. Sure. Yep. And, you know, we need to be there. I remember mm -hmm. when I went to school, I had never heard about software engineering. But when video games started to pop off, application programming, you know, mm -hmm. they, they could have easily come out of college making six figures. And, I was and, impressed and, yesterday and we when do. someone told me she's going away to study cinematology. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I said... I don't never thought of cinematology. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, of, co of course I think well, you're not going to come back here because there's no work here for that kind of, But then, then she said to me, no, but I can come and I can videotape my version. She explained it to you. She explained it to me. Yeah. I come back and so everybody else does it. But this jurisdiction is a great place for doing movies. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It needs to be explored. Yeah. You don't got to create no set. It's a set. set. It's a set. natural, it's 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 a natural <laughs> set. But that's one thing I should say, and I applaud the direction I see the technical school is going. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because look at our regional neighbors. Look at all of our MEPs, and mechanical engineering, plumbing, mm -hmm. electrical. They come from other islands. Exactly. Today because they yes. didn't have the luxury yeah. of a developed tourism product and the financial services. Mm -hmm. So they were forced into... The trades. Yeah. So uh, you go build a house. Because you anything, always need a trade. And the person who comes to your house is one of our regional neighbors. Mm -hmm. It ain't us. Mm -hmm. And so we need to learn from that sheet of paper from them. Yeah. And I think that's one good direction I, I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. at, at least there's a good opportunity yeah. to okay. advance that technical because, school. And, and that's the thing where the stigma of the technical school being, well, if you can't make it in the, the typical academic environment. That's where yes. you go. And that's not true. It's the wrong Because wrong. it's the same where, you know, as a child, someone, a child might say, I want to become a plumber. You know, you, you don't, you don't push that back. You encourage them. Yes. Sure. Because plumbing is a business. It is tremendous you know, money. That's an opportunity for plumbing. them Are there. you kidding me? <laughs> if I have to do a career, I'll be a plumber. You want to say it all the time. Yeah. Oh, you, you make it, it. You're making double digits an hour. But the funny thing when I was in high school, that's what I wanted to be. Yeah. But all my friends teased me. Oh, you want, you yeah. want to be with Phil? You, know, you want to be with all stuff? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, it's true. Yeah. Now you look at plumbing. Now it comes. Yep. A truck comes and pumps your septic card. You're going to touch yeah. nothing. And you're going exactly. To and you got to give him a couple hundred dollars <laughs> to go with it, too. You know? But it's something where everything has to start to come together because on another conversation I had, you know, 
again, the first world countries, they know that they can't absorb all their graduates. They can't absorb in terms of providing enough job opportunities. Mm -hmm. So they train their people to go work in the world. And we see that here now we're employing people from 12 or what time zones away. They need a job opportunity and they're willing but to travel that, and that's where they're here. I'm glad you said that because back to the labor point that Claude was making. Mm -hmm. There was a time when we were discussing persons like them working for five years and training Roger and Anders to take those positions. Mm -hmm. And never talk. seemed to work it. It was talk for a little while, it was mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. Now, to bring back up the late Otto Levitty Stout, that was his vision. Mm -hmm. I mean, I lived to see it not happen. Mm -hmm. Because when I came back from school, the, week, the, the year before I came, I went to ask him in a meeting to build a bridge over the gut where my land is in yeah. Caribbean. He promised me he would. That was February. May he died. Mm -hmm. But then mm -hmm. the the meeting and he said, when you finish Cali Boy, I said, I'm finishing in December. I was supposed to finish in December, 95. Hurricane Marilyn pushed me to 96. Mm -hmm. I have a job for you, he said. So when he died, I said, well, the job gone. But I came back home and couldn't find work. Mm -hmm. And I was speaking with Gina Smith, and she said, yeah, the job is there. Go speak to this person. I went and spoke to the person and said, yes, the job is here. I still didn't get it. But the job was to understudy Captain Sala mm -hmm. ah, for VI shipping registry. The shipping registry. When did Captain Sala retire? 2011, 2012? Somewhere around After yeah. he's married to Abivia mm -hmm. That was never Levity's vision. Mm -hmm. Under five years or by five years, yeah. I'll be should have had so that So why do you think that, that never happened? Because we, we have it someplace, I think it was in the old labor code. I'm not too sure if it's in the current one mm -hmm. in terms of the honor study. We see other jurisdictions, other OTs, I say, for example, in Cayman, saying, mm -hmm. you know, in seven years, you have your work permit, but also putting the owners on the companies or the businesses to look for a local resource that can be understudied in their in the organization or whether you sponsor them as a scholarship and they go off. But if we, we if government continues to make it okay to just rubber stamp or permits, well, it's, see, it's never gonna but happen. I speak to your accountability but he's not about law, he's not about making it a law. Accountability yeah. when you don't have no enforceable mechanism in your system. This mm -hmm. is this is good governance. Yes. Where where is the accountability mechanism in each of those departments, in each of those ministries that will trigger yeah. if you ain't doing what you're supposed, supposed to be doing? To know, yeah. That's what that's what accountability looks like, and there needs to be an actual system. Yeah. And persons who plug in and put to that system and where red flags go up Check, says Yeah, yeah you because know, if I if I ask for a work permit, part of my renewal process if it's gonna get renew, better be who's the honor study for this position. Exactly. That I don't see this pop up again in the next two, three year yes. cycle. Now let me tell you why this, I believe this doesn't happen, Shana. It's not because our people, we don't know this stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's not because groups have not been put together by various governments to oh, come yeah. up we with. Oh, yeah, we study this to death. I know. Is that there is not been any political will mm -hmm. to enact and these programs it. and, and have lost. them enforced mm -hmm. because yes. we are forever playing politics with, with people's lives. lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is what needs to cease and desist. In 2011, that was a And group, that's not even good governance. That is not good governance. Not there good was a group put together to, on this whole immigration uh, mm -hmm. agenda. We they this thing they with came this. up, they presented to the government a document with categories of how you can classify each person. Yes, person's been here for 20 years, 25, some 40 years, mm -hmm. and they have certain rights and rewards and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. But their classification, because you cannot the United States is the only country on the planet is that has where you're born, you're from. It doesn't exist anywhere else. Yeah, there. Mm -hmm. And we do not have that luxury. No matter what anybody comes to me and tells me, we do not have that luxury and it should never become policy nor law. We have to have a proper immigration policy in place mm -hmm. where there are categories that persons are clear about where they fit into mm -hmm. what their responsibilities are and what the rewards are mm -hmm. as a citizen as a resident as a belonger etc etc yeah. mm -hmm. i'll go a step further since i'm on it <laughs> because we are a shrinking minority in terms in, of the local in indigenous, indigenous so we in talk terms of indigenous okay. in this country. Mm -hmm. There are some areas that needs to be put in place constitutionally. Mm -hmm. There's certain posts, I think the premiership is one, that needs to be put in place constitutionally where no one can hold that office unless you are Bivya Island. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Indigenous baby. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, I want to put that out there just as clear. Yeah, no, that's controversial. Uh, con but but the, whole, <laughs> the, the whole world is controversial. <laughs> yes. Immigration is the number one issue, issue on right the now. planet that's right, right now. That's yes. right. You, you realize that the other day in April, the World Bank and uh, IMF mm -hmm. dropped their protectionist uh, 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 policy. policy? Uh -huh. You understand what I tell you? And say it again. The World Bank and an International Monetary Fund, with their G20 meeting, the first quarter meeting, okay. dropped their protectionist pledge. This was where they were, what they were doing? They, they, they were protecting they the, were the force, fixing the what the world was going to look like yeah. and the country's going to look like. Yeah. Donald Trump has thrown such a monkey wrench in the whole world's program. Oh, yeah. God knows he's crazy. But here's one thing he's clear about. Mm -hmm. America God first. Force, yep. Now, even if that's just lip service, but it has forced the G20, it has forced the World Bank, the IMF, which is the grouping of all the financial secretaries of those jurisdictions, mm -hmm. to say we can't go with that no more. Yeah. Yes, we would like to see it. What, does ha <laughs> what happens to globalization okay. then? Yeah. What happens to level playing field oh, then? Yeah. So here we are, mm -hmm. three phone companies in our country. Three of them offer internet, and we still have the poorest internet in, in this the jurisdiction world. and paying the highest price Person. point. Mm -hmm. No law, no enforcement. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And and and, and in, in, in a small footprint in, in 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 areas who has a larger population than us only have two or one, we have three. Mm -hmm. How, you know what Donald Trump says? I don't care what you sign. Everything is on the table and is up for negotiation. I'm gonna tear up NAFTA, I'm gonna tear up the TPP, mm -hmm. I'm gonna tear up whatever it is. Yep. You can't tell me what we can't do. Yeah. There needs to be proper leadership in this country that has an understanding of the times and know what the BVI ought to do, mobilize and marshal its people behind it, set a course yeah. for how we're going to get there and when we're going to get there. Yeah. We need that because we, we definitely do not have that map yeah. that says, you know, in 25 years, this is, this is where we're trying to get to. So there's an expectation now, even in the population, to say, well, this is what we're working towards. Yeah. You know, so we have to address certain issues and stop kicking the can down, down the road. road. Because when we're kicking the can down the road, we're sweeping it up under the rug. Under the rug. You know, and it's only going to be a matter of time that it trips us up. And the final thing I want to say about the economy, there needs to, something needs to happen with our banks in this jurisdiction. <laughs> it has become, has become impossible possible especially for our people mm -hmm. to 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 have any meaningful banking services access in this country access to finite resources yeah. and then they they pay you little for the money you have Less and then charging you a fee <laughs> mm -hmm. for everything mm -hmm. every transaction of your money yeah. yep. where is the voice from any government that is called these banks to the table and says, you cannot do this to our people. Yeah. We will not allow this. Where is the aggressive, the ongoing aggressive yeah. moves to shore up your national bank? Thanks. To say, oh, okay, okay, since you won't hear us, yeah. we, will, we will put in place our own yeah. institution where we can be self-standing. But you see, right now, we're so always so dependent mm -hmm. to go through the feed and service to banker, to go through this yeah. one. Mm -hmm. It leaves your people in a disadvantaged yeah. position. And that. until That's and unless about. you are prepared to deal with the structure and the system yes. that yes. keeps your people behind. Yes. You, you can talk self-governance, good governance all you want. Yeah. It ain't going to happen because the, the structure issue. is in place exactly. and the system is in place yeah. that keeps your people back. Yep. That, that's and I, I hate to get so animated, but I, <laughs> no. it, it done got in my no, blood we, we, and my we, spirit. And but that's what's needed. Mm -hmm. There needs to be that well, we public outcry. We're not talking about a solution. We're not talking yeah. about a problem. Yeah. yeah. We said this is what a problem. Here's a solution. Here's a solution. Yeah. And this is what the dialogue is about. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's the important key part to it because there yeah. has to be a public outcry. There has to be a public conversation now yes. around things like this because, again, these are things that we've known for the last 10, 15 years, if not longer. I'm being generous here because some of this stuff yeah. I know from before I went after college yes. and, and, and do you know exactly. even with all the even with all the rigors they put us through in this banking industry do you know we don't still don't have a comparable thing of the fdic no you still know that our money that. is uninsured sure, yeah. and all of our millionaire indigenous people who are here sitting on, on, on dollars if, the, if their money is here Gone. who tonight if this thing falls out Gone, gone. They don't have to go out on the pair park and jump off. Yeah, don't encourage it. But, but I'm <laughs> saying. <laughs> but that's a serious thing. Where is the government? Where are governments? Not yeah. just no one government. Where Where is the 
thinking. Mm -hmm. Where are the decisions being made and the resources being put behind those decisions to ensure that there are safeguards for your people? Yeah, yeah. That's what my idea and that's that all part God, of quality of life. I need to know life. if I'm going to the bank and, and I have, um, you know, I'm trying to save up for college for my, for my children. Yeah. You know, I, I have to know that that's protected. They make us take out insurance on the loans mm. to make sure but if we falter, they still get their money wow. back. But that, here it is now in the reverse. Mm -hmm. You know, it's up to you. I, 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 I could get to the point of say, saving $10,000 towards a college education. If the bank wake up tomorrow and put a sign on the door, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Do you know whatever happened to either one of you know whatever happened to the whole small business thing that we. Well, from what I know, there's supposed to be some restructuring going on with the National Business Bureau. Okay. Um, and again, that is one of those key, key institutions within the public service that, again, when we're talking about economic empowerment, it has to come through arms like that. that. Mm. You know, so we can't think away with it like we had the loan guarantee program. Haven't mm -hmm. heard much about that because, again, that, that's something that I think it was prematurely done in terms of having it structured and the, the proper parameters in terms of what the rules were supposed to be around it. So that, that came, has to be rebuilt. When I, when I came up, I got scared because I was hoping it doesn't come like the pioneer status. Here is this nice idea to give persons who come into a new industry, let's say you're going to start recycling. Mm -hmm. So you get a pioneer status, you get 10, ten years tax break and that kind of stuff. But who benefited from it? Mm -hmm. yeah. The ones who got more education about it. Yeah. Now you'd start this loan. Who get the education and this to benefit from this? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be our people? Is going to be expatriates you know who's it really for yeah so i'm that was my fear about it so it's been restructured yeah I there, hope there's some work being done on place. it so it's, i think it's been but back to the bank issue the interest rate is what is killing us the most mm -hmm. and i saw that when barclays bank closed down and they had to publish all their you know the financials the in, the, in mm -hmm. the newspaper at the time had a standpoint and i was able to compare that with barbados in our little population they were making more money here than they made in barbados Mm. That has what five times or population. population. So that means our interest rate is five times theirs yeah. by calculation. Mm -hmm. Then in 2008, when Obama took over and he put all these one percent on mortgages and stuff, we were still getting mortgages at 6.785 mm -hmm. mm. in 2008. American banks mm -hmm. in our country. So if it's good there, then even if you put it at three percent, we could refinance now. Mm. We even yeah. have to go to one percent, but if yeah. you got at least two percent above, you know. Yeah. But no, we still up here knowing again you, like, you might see a 5%. We are not special. You know, you are special. <laughs> but you up at 6.7 in them kind yeah. of It's great. You can't win. No. But, and then the spread. Yeah. The, now the spread can be narrow. Yeah. Between what you get on your interest it's, and what it's, you It's, it's tough. Well, we're going to take another commercial break, and then we'll be right back and pick up the next three um, on the home stretch. So you've been tuned into the Vigilante Dialogues. If you just tune in, oh, you miss a big conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to tell you how you can catch, catch the replay as well as go and watch it on demand. Um, conversation tonight, again, we're talking about good governance. This is part three. We'll be right back after these messages. All right, good next three. But you're going to time left. Yeah, we have about 15, 20 minutes. You do? Yeah. Oh, clock over there. Yeah, he went to the time. 52 minutes? Yes, they start 52. 57, 41. Stop at night. I'm going to start back. Put on the mic. Put on the mic, man. Put on the mic. I'm watching my time, man. I'm watching my time. <laughs> All right. Um, that, 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 that. We cannot touch on telecom. You know, kill a day. Actually, we're leaving political to the last. I don't know how we want it, if we want to tackle that. Because then the social welfare, the only thing we talk about the elderly, the at-risk youth, cultural heritage, and the legal system. You all want to touch those before we get to political? Or just give the time to the politics? Which is some culture. <coughs> True. Yeah, let's so talk about national identity. That one ain't got to be long. Um, we already touched on the environment already and about ownership. Physical infrastructure, we know we got these assets, but we got to talk about that one. <laughs> it's like we borrowing money to, to, to fix nothing. Welcome back. You're tuned in to the Vigilante Dialogues. I'm your host, Shana Smith, welcoming you again to the National Boardroom. Tonight, our conversation is around good governance, what it is and what it isn't. And we may have a very good conversation in terms of bringing those examples of, you know, where we can stand to improve and even a lot of ideas. This is a little think tank going on. You check it out. The government want to hire us, call me. 
<laughs> <laughs> so we touch on economic development, um, education, immigration, and labor. Those are some very key areas. Let's touch on culture and heritage. You know, we're coming up on our festival. Um, where are we at? Today, let me tell you, share our conversation I had today actually with somebody. And I, well, she was talking about a visit to another Caribbean country. And she was like, you know, it's, it's practically as if they're indoctrinating you, right, in terms of even the visitors. So she was saying that when persons get off of the cruise ships, they hand them a hat and a, a, a soft T-shirt that has the country's flag on it and the name of the country on it. And they tell them, you know, when you go into certain shops and you have this on, you automatically get a discount. Oh, interesting. Mm. Interesting. Good you understand? So you, 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 you see the level in terms of saying your experience in this country is something that's going to be stamped on you. Because now, even if you didn't plan to shop, mm -hmm. the fact that you're being told now, you're yeah, at discount, just go into the, 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 you know, the commerce center and they, the ones they see the shirts now, because everybody now have obviously has come around the table and this plan was mm -hmm. about. And I was like, that is so simple, it's ingenious. It's genius. Yes, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yes, yes. And for us now, it's, and then so she started talking about, you know, the, the flag for the country is painted at the bottom of the, like, poles, um, you know, the signage all around. Everything you see in terms of the visual in that country mm -hmm. promotes the, the identity yes, of that country. country. Um, yeah, she did. It was St. Kitts. St. Okay. And it was, so I was like, you know, for real, because it's like we threw up all flags around the road about for territory day and they were gone in a week <laughs> or two. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think every government building in BVI should be flying a national flag. You should know this is a government institution, you know, because the, the, the uh, effort being made in the schools, that is definitely a good start because, it, again, it teaches or, or younger citizens know that when they come up, hold out, they have a respect for the flag and can identify with the flag mm -hmm. in terms of what it's meaning. But, you know, for me, I'm, I'm going to advocate this that I can't do it anymore. I should not say until it's done. Is we need to have VI history in our primary school come all the way up and make it a requirement in the college to get a degree. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because those are the types of things, as far as being, they, they may seem simplistic, but mm -hmm. they, they facilitate building the national identity and reinforcing it. It is not just about local people needing to know local history, but anybody mm -hmm. that takes up shop in here mm -hmm. needs, to know, needs to know who we are. Mm -hmm. There's no question about exactly. it. And let it be something that we're willing to put on display every little opportunity that we have. Exactly. You know? Paint, we, we paint in the tree them with white paint. Put the flag on it. I, I could support that. Yeah, but sometimes I go, I'm now painting the base of the palm trees and they're just white. There's no value in that. And that's one of the biggest things for me when it is we see, I see those things I look at as wastage. Well, what, what, what you've just uh, described is a result of somebody or bodies, leadership, who decided to make their national pride and their culture a priority. Mm -hmm. And then behind that decision, they put resources, came up with a strategy and of how we're going to permeate the mm -hmm. entire jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. And then enforce it. When you it. have mm -hmm. that, then it's, that's what makes it seem so simple and seamless because culture becomes everybody's business. Yes. Okay? Now, I must say, and under this particular government, there's been some strides in our national song, in our dress, yeah, and so, the, so there's been some yeah. good strides. Mm -hmm. And so what we're talking about is a more to expand on that, to yes. build on that. Mm -hmm. And some of, you know, we have to put a demand yeah. on the tourist board. We've got to put a demand on private businesses. Here's the role we want you to play. Here is the area that you're going to be responsible for, yeah. on the Rotary Clubs, on this. And, and mm -hmm. then you have the whole country that rallies around yeah, yeah. the celebration of your culture. Yeah. You see, the reason why there's a shine away from the primary school or even a college to have a degree is that when people do not know mm -hmm. that you have a rich history, yeah. a noble heritage, that you have something to be proud of, yeah. that if you knew that, there wouldn't be no shying away from making a, 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 a part of your curriculum or making a degree yeah. program for associates in your college. So, so we need to rediscover. Mm -hmm. We and do. And for some of us, discover for the first time. Yeah. What is our history, and why should we be proud? And yeah. why should we feel gallant and like giants? Because you know, to me, issues where you have to be, you know, hand prepared talking about littering is a problem. When you proud of your country, you think twice about throwing the bottles and the the, the food containers on the window yeah. because the little, the little this problem. is yours. 
the you names. Know, there's ownership because yes. that's that's what it is at the end of the day. National Pride is trying to facilitate it. It's about ownership. The mm -hmm. names of our four parents uh, who have made certain specific contribution needs to be emblazoned yes. across this jurisdiction. Example, every school needs to be statues, needs to be houses. Do you know who this person is? Who's Isabella Morris? N yeah, needs to be Who's museums. Yeah. Needs to be, you know? Yeah. You know? There, I mean, you there, might know. There isn't a sign of them up or a picture, I would say. Like, in the schools, mm -hmm. I should see a sign, um, a picture. This is Ivan Dawson. This is his story. Exactly. Yeah. Isabella Mars, this is his this story. Is the story. Ebenezer yeah. Thomas, this is this their story. story. Joy Samuels, this is their story. Because right. even with, um, we had also started talking about with the, the National Stadium, right? Mm -hmm. It's time we do something with those blank walls. Actually, I was just talking yes. to somebody the other day. They started telling me about, you know, the, the heroes from softball days, when yeah. softball was softball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I say, yeah, all of those are things now that need to go up on those fields, wherever the recreational facilities, who are the heroes from the different sports? Exactly. So whether it's track, mm -hmm. it's cricket, it's soccer. It should tell a story. We should, it should be readily be visible. Through good graf good, good graffiti, mm -hmm. you know, or, or plaques. Yeah. You know, those are, those are things that, that can be done. But, but like, And that's all part of the tourism product now, uh, because at the end of the day, right, cultural tourism is all, all culture is all we have. Everybody so, have sun, sea, and sand. But when you come to the BVI, the BVI experience is supposed to be unique to anybody else. Yes. Because, I mean, think about it. When yes. you visit a country, do you not want to know something in Their heritage. You want to know what, who, want who are these people? And what <laughs> are they? You want to better, at, at least walk away. And a little less made in China. With, 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 with that. You know, but, but here's my critique, though. Uh -huh. You take, for example, you gotta, it, it begs the question. I think it's almost two, over, over two years now. We still don't have a library. Yeah, uh, no, don't get me started. Okay, because the archives will be the next thing yeah. that I want. But, but but that's my point. You see, so so I I I, I am saying, yes, we're making strides. Yes, we've come a long way. But it just seems like to me there's just some basic fundamental we're things missing. that should never be missing. Yeah, we're missing. Missing some stuff. You know, where, 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 where is the, where's the resource sensor? Where that has the artifacts, that has mm -hmm. the story, that has the books, that, and where students go, where adults go, where mm -hmm. anyone goes. Yeah. How is it that it's taking us so long to get our library back? Oh. Yeah. You know? And even then, that's still you separate from the archives, because the archives is a little department now. Check the line item on the budget. Upstairs, mm -hmm. which is true. But you said. But I thought we had. A, I thought it said it had a place somewhere. We do, and I understand it's almost ready. But again, oh. we need the information needs to be more. It's almost ready. ready. Okay, good. So where is I, it? You know where it is. Um, yeah, it's supposed to be up at uh, Passier, one of those um in the building where Clarence Thomas. Someone just moved from. Okay. 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 Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. So we have it coming, but the archives now is another part of that. As far as that's where we're ca we're supposed to be keeping all our historical records. Um, and preserving them as history is being made. Because now, as time passes, they're going to be constantly adding, you know, records and documents to it. So it's, it, it's something that we really have to be intentional about in terms of saying, we get an adequate size enough facility mm -hmm. that's going to be able to, again, if persons want to come and do research on the history of the BVI, you know, we have these things, even for our school children. Yeah. You know, they do reports in school and they have that. I think what would also help with the tourism, which will come into politics, is political reform. Mm -hmm. I've always been advocating. You already pivoted, all right. So yes. on there. <laughs> I've, always, I've always been advocating for a six ministry, uh -huh. where because one of the reasons why I think we are failing in our tourism and in our economy, mm -hmm. because there are two giants under one ministry, mm -hmm. the premier's office. Mm -hmm. You know, split it. And that's been your thing, because you're saying there's not enough adequate focus or individual focus. focus. So, you, and then you got culture under education with prison and everything else that's under education. Yeah. Take culture out and put it under tourism. So, Ministry of Tourism and Culture. Mm -hmm. you, just, you, just, you just said cultural tourism. Mm -hmm. The Ministry of Tourism and Culture. This way, now there's a line item on the budget for culture. Mm -hmm. And all these things that we're here talking about now. Can get the attention they need. Can get the attention they need and the yeah. financing they need and make it happen from the. Yeah. You know, from the school but straight I, up. I would have gone even further than that, but they might say that we, we, we aren't um, big enough for that. But you know, like how in, in some jurisdictions they have an upper and a lower parliament? Because, mm -hmm. yeah, this, this thing of just 13 people, I don't know. It's not, it's not working in our interest. And some people feel we need to do away actually with the district system and go to all at large, which is what it was for us. It was basically 
the first first, uh, well, not the first time. When we reintroduced the leg legislative council in 1950, mm -hmm. it was basically the top five vote getters who became the leg co. The la at large came, I think, in 19. And then that was brought back in the 90s. In the early, yeah, yeah, in the early 80s, actually. Because Which they went to the late 80s, system. early 90s. But yeah, I, I, but I don't know. We need to revisit that district system for real. But what I would offer, and, 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 and that, what, I, what I would offer, that I think, and, and, and certainly to what both of you have said, amen. But <laughs> given what we have mm -hmm. and where we are, there is an underutilization of our backbenches. That is yes. true. And it ain't going to cost us no more money. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why under communication and works and all the stuff that falls under there mm -hmm. why you don't have a backbencher with the minister for that mm -hmm. subject like whose minister. particular focus mm -hmm. is on one or two of those jurisdictions where he or she is empowered in tandem mm -hmm. you know with the minister mm -hmm. but, but 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 when you when you if you don't have the sense of teamwork mm -hmm. or if you're in trying to hog the show mm -hmm. and jump on the and, bus and, and and think that you know yeah. was yeah. only I'm, there's only one minister I'm the I can minister. be in charge. Yeah. you're still the minister yeah. but I'm talking now about the utilization of your resources without expanding the budget having additional cost mm -hmm. And it also provides an opportunity for those backbenchers to really have a, a shattering and a meaningful way mm -hmm. that prepares themselves to ultimately one day yeah, serve their country, country in a ministerial fashion. Yeah. But to have just seven people, eight people, God knows whatever it is, sitting on a backbencher doing nothing mm -hmm. except lapping it, uh, let me not use that phrase, yeah. just sitting on a backbench unutilized, I'm saying there's one way for us to do this. Education and culture and ecclesiastical affairs. Hey, why isn't somebody from the back bench with that minister mm -hmm. who has learned just as much? He, in this case, it's a he who has assigned that person. You focus on this. You make sure we yeah. have A, B, C, and and that person. This is that gender for culture. Yeah. I need you to push that. You push that mm -hmm. up under why why agriculture is lacking. Mm -hmm. There's nobody with that minister mm -hmm. who focuses on agriculture, mm -hmm. who focuses on labor, mm -hmm. who focuses on job. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. So I just I, I if I was in charge, and that's that's a good that's if a good I was, solution. If I was in charge, yeah. That's what I will do mm -hmm. as a cure without having to trouble the system or going to the UK and asking for an expansion for different that's ministries. Because that's a long process. We have to see what we have. And I'm going to say this in closing because I don't know how much time we have left. Yeah, we out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say this. Shane LT, there, there's some things that we have to do. We have to do. Mm -hmm. We, the people. We, we, we shouldn't have to have the governor or the FCO office or anybody tells us. We have to do. We have to put the systems in place that provides for transparency and accountable. We have to have our registry, the, uh, our, our community meetings. We have to have our PAC meetings. We have to do that. We we ain't eligible. We shouldn't have to be told to do that. Mm -hmm. The only reason why you have to be told to do that is because you ain't doing it. Mm -hmm. Do it. Why give anybody an occasion? Exactly to deal with you mm -hmm. in a way that you don't have to be there with but if the you just do but what you're supposed to do exactly. to strengthen your institutions. Yeah. It's easier said than done because the garrison policies that we have create so much fear that those who are willing to do are telling you, oh, I'm a civil servant, which is the biggest employment body in the BVI. Mm -hmm. and, it, they, and they're so fearful because I speak to them all the time. And I said, let's do. Mm -hmm. I talked to you last week at the table this committee. Mm -hmm. Let's do something. But well, they all fail. But, 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 too much but work. This, and but how do we get to all the fail? Yeah, but it's just the civil service. I ain't blaming the civil service. And I hear you. Mm -hmm. But what I'm speaking about in particular, mm -hmm. I'm referencing that article that was in the paper last week where the governor lists some items mm -hmm. of just yeah, some committee that just wasn't happening. Mm -hmm. And they, they, this is these are ministerial functions who chair these yeah. areas. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me we, you, you ain't doing that? Why, why, why open that door? Yeah. Why mm -hmm. leave an open door? Yeah. To have that kind of criticism come against you, giving somebody you, the when you to have hang a with. fiduciary responsibility yeah. simply to carry out your job. Mm -hmm. yep. that's How a, does that that's advance your people and your country if you cannot <clears throat> even demonstrate that you are prepared to maintain and strengthen your existing systems? Well, hear what? When we will end on this note, sure. I, I heard it today. Mm -hmm. I started listening to a book by Simon Sinek. He said there are, there are leaders, mm -hmm. and then there are those who lead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that's what we suffer from here in the BBA. Because people get titles, but then there's no response. They don't take the responsibility seriously. Because they say, you know, it comes out of Spider-Man movie, with great power comes great responsibility. And having a title doesn't make you a leader. No. So there are, there are leaders, and then there are those who actually lead. Yeah. And I think, you know, in terms of everything we've talked about tonight, in terms of good governance, that's why it boils down to, we need to have people who will lead or who are willing to lead, meaning they're going to make the hard decisions. They're going to make the unpopular decisions so, if it comes down to this is in the best interest of the country for now and for the next generation, you know, and, and that's where it is. Listen, 2019 election going to be interesting because we can't afford to go back and put back the same, what I would say, the same caliber or the same philosophy that has gotten us to where we are. Because and expect a different result. And expect a different result. Um, that's, that's a perfect place to end the LT. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for being here. We're definitely going to pick this up later on at some point again because this is something that I want us to keep current in people's minds, so keep it on the front bone, eh? mm -hmm. and not slide back and say, well, oh, you know, that was last week's news story, but, you know, we're looking yeah. at the next thing. So that's that's where we're at. I thank you for tuning into the Vigilante Dialogues. We've been getting a lot of good feedback when I see you guys. Any topics you want us to discuss, feel free to make your suggestions. And if you like to see this again or share it with somebody, check us out on YouTube. Just search for Vigilati Dialogues and it will come up. We're going to be back on here on Channel 51 on Sundays at 3.30 p.m. and Mondays at 8 p.m. I am your host, Shana Smith, saying let's continue the change in conversation for a better Virgin Islands.